Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about don't set your sub in the corner of the room. Part two, we did a video on it many years ago and we're going to update now for you and add a little bit of uh, data and information. Let's keep those subs out of the corners. A lot of nonsense out there. What are the corners of a room? There were all the room modes, those nasty creatures we've been, <clears throat> excuse me, fighting axial, tangential, and oblique modes, they all end up in the corners. They're all partying together in the corner. Why would we want to mess with that? Our goal is to eliminate distortion, not add to it or excite more of it, right? Why would we do that? I don't usually tell people to use common sense when it comes to acoustics, but in this case, why, right? Why would you want to excite those modes and make them greater? We wouldn't, okay? We want more distortion in our rooms? No, our goal is less, 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 okay? Less energy, less distortion. All input is air, right? The room by itself is fine. We start putting music in it, we get air. We get axial modes, tangential, but all input is air, all right? Quantity versus quality. This is the where the shoe rubs or pinches, whatever uh, term you want to use here. Most of the companies out there, including subwoofers, companies that quantity. Big, 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 big. More, more, more. Stack subs on top of each other. More and more energy. More and more energy into a room that can't handle the energy you're putting in it from one driver you're going to add more. How does adding more of a cause to a problem help you with the solution? I can't figure that one out. I don't think anyone can because it's not true. All right. Here's a classic example. Four subs in the corners. Oh, great. Let's spend $10,000 at $2,500 a sub, average price today, to excite all the modes that are in the corners of the room and produce more distortion. And plus 3 to plus 5 dB of room gain. I thought our goal was to have less room gain, not more. All this in trade-off for a smoother response, it's not worth it. You're not going to get a smoother response. You may, it might measure better, but is that what you're really wanting to do with $10,000? Treat just low frequency issues in the room? For $10,000, you can treat everything and be done with it. So we want to treat the room for modal issues first. That's the first thing above and beyond. We got to do that. We got to do that. How do we do it? We build low frequency management into the walls. We have a process where you can do this called CAW, or Carbon Technology World, famous, all used all over the world. It, it, you, you just can't beat the process because the distance between the studs in a room is 14 inches, roughly. So you're a, we're able to tune with our carbon technology every 14 inches in the room. What chance does does room modes have when you when you're able to go after it like this every 14 and a half inches on every wall surface every wall surface floor ceiling and four walls it won't it can't hide it can't hide from us we'll get it we'll figure it out we'll figure the frequency we'll figure the amplitude we'll figure the location and we'll design the carbon to go after that problem every 14 and a half inches most room modes are three four feet wide average. So we're going after a 36, 48 inch problem every 14 and a half inches. So you can see the, the benefit of the carbon. Isolate and attenuate. If we raise the sub off the floor, we isolate it from the floor and we isolate and elevate in a structure that attenuates or absorbs energy, it's a one, two, three win. How many times does one product give you three wins? Not too many. Okay. So, the units are also on casters. I can't think of a better thing for a subwoofer platform than to have it on wheels. OK, 
because you got to figure out where to put it. Yeah, there's formulas people say and use and all that. Great. Okay. They're amplitude specific. They might work at 80 dB SPL. You could turn up a dB or two dBs, they won't work. Okay. So the bottom line here is you got to, you got to voice it. You got to move it around and listen. And then you can measure. You can do that. Okay. It's a simple process using an RTA. You can look at what's going on in each location. But if you know your room well enough and you have the platform on casters, you can move it around. You'll find the location. And then once you find the location, it stays there. And the beautiful thing about that, the casters isolate it from the surface area. Okay. Here's another thing. Driver, size, room volume. We've got a 16-ounce glass of water in our room. And we're, with a subwoofer, we're trying to put 24 ounces of fluid in it. Not going to fit. That eight ounces is distortion, okay? Room game, room boom, bass boom, okay? We, we've all heard it, all right? So you got 16 ounces. We're trying to put in 24. I always use the example. I was having uh, dinner the other night. The restaurant was full, so I sat at the bar. And I watched the bartenders mix drinks. And they'll take liquid from one bottle, pour it in, Liquid from another bottle poured in. There might be four or five different substances going into this metal container that then is sh shaken or put in a stir to stir it up. And it's always amazing to me when they pour it out with these six, five or six variables that went into it and they pour it out, the level's perfect at the top. The metal container's empty. You ever seen that? And the glass is perfectly full. There's nothing. They toss the metal container in the, to wash it. Unbelievable. Five or six variables, and the thing is perfect. There's no spill, no nothing. Well, that's what we try to do in acoustics, right? Think about it. Four, five, six variables. We try to get it to balance. So with subwoofers, you want to pressurize the room just enough. And the way you do that is you match the size and the room volume, and you also treat. It's a combination, driver size, room volume, and treatment. So you've got many variables that go into it, just like the, the bartender, many different ingredients. We have many different ingredients in room acoustics. But this example here of the bartender pouring all, that's what you want to do with a subwoofer. And it starts with the driver size and diameter. Don't be putting 18-inch drivers in closets, all right? Don't be doing that. Match the driver size to the room volume and usage. And it's even going to change with every dB of pressure on the gain knob. All righty. Don't set your subwoofer in the corner, please. Oh, and this uh, four subs smoothing out frequency, put the numbers to it. You're going to get a three to four dB maybe improvement in room response. I've tried it. And what are you going to spend? I mean, I saw subwoofers the other day, $7,500 each. Four of those, it's thirty grand. For $30,000, we can give you a room that the whole frequency range is balanced. Attack and decay rates are balanced. Uh, reverb times are good. We can do a lot with 30 k Don't be putting it in boxes, keeping your fingers crossed, moving it around, or sticking it in corners. It's not going to work, okay? You can go after a lot of problems with the money you spend on multiple subwoofers. You got to be careful here because manufacturers know you like to buy boxes. They know it. They play upon that. Okay. We did a video the other day called Idol Worship and, and gave many, many examples of people that buy gear, build these big idols. You know, well, isn't the goal to have all this electronics disappear and just have music in our rooms? And, and to you equipment manufacturers out there, the power lights, put them in the back. We don't need to be looking at them. I can look at the back and see if the power's on or not. You know, we don't want all that. Or give us the option to shut it off. Some units do. Dimming is great. Shutting off is even better. Don't set your sub in the corner. Part two. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. 
We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.